Hello viewers, for DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this breakout video here, I'll be showing you how to replace the lower ball joints on a third generation Dodge Ram. This is a 2006 four wheel drive model. Loose or worn ball joints can cause uneven tire wear, steering wandering, clunking, stiff steering, and in a severe situation cause the steering knuckle to disconnect while driving. First start by safely elevating the front of the vehicle and remove the wheel. Once the wheel has been removed, Next is popping out the center cap. This is by far the easiest way to loosen the axle nut. Reinstall the wheel and lower the wheel down onto the ground. This will prevent the wheel from spinning when loosening that nut. Using a 35mm socket with a Johnson bar, loosen that axle nut. Elevate the front of the vehicle again and remove the wheel. Loosen the master cylinder reservoir cap. Loosen the two 21mm bolts holding on the caliper and carrier assembly. Compress the piston and the caliper using a large interlocking pliers. Finally finish up removing the two bolts. Remove the caliper assembly and tie it up to the frame using a bungee cord. Do not hang the caliper by the rubber flex line as this can cause damage. Remove the rotor and place it somewhere safe where it won't come into contact with any grease or oil. Next is removing the cotter pins on the upper ball joint, lower ball joint, and tie rod. Here I'm using my needle nose pliers from my OEM Tools plier set. Model number 22649. It comes in a set of four, also includes a groove joint pliers, diagonal pliers, and side cutters. Hardened jaws for a long life, plated finish to resist corrosion, and ergonomic handles for comfort. It's a must-have for anyone's toolbox. A link to these will be included in the video description to Mobile Distributor Supply. The tie rod has a slightly different style. It uses a clip based on what was supplied with the specific brand. If you are looking for a video on how to replace the tie rods on a Dodge Ram, I do have a tutorial for this. Finish up by removing that 35mm axle nut. To make sure the spline isn't rusted in place, use a brass or lead hammer to hit the tip. Brass or lead is soft, therefore it won't cause any damage to the threads on the axle. Another option is making that nut flush with the outer thread on the shaft and using a regular ball peen hammer. Using the appropriate size sockets, loosen the upper ball joint, tie rod, and lower ball joint. Socket sizes will vary depending on which brand of components are used. The tie rod was removed. They were replaced as of more recently, therefore I have to be extra careful not to damage them. I used a lead hammer to give it a hit with a nut flush on the threaded portion. Finish up by removing the nut on the upper ball joint. Using a ball joint spreader, separate the upper ball joint from the steering knuckle. There is tension and this will pop up once released, so be mindful of that. A peckle fork can also be used, but keep in mind that will most likely damage the boot. Unfortunately, my ball joint separator wasn't large enough to pop the lower ball joint free. The tool specific for this job was on back order for about 6 months, so I decided to modify my own ball joint spreader. I made up short extension arms on the separator to widen the jaws. I also used the assistance of a lead hammer on the lower jaw, pushing on the stud. This is an aluminum steering knuckle. I do not recommend hitting it with the hammer as this can cause damage. Disconnect the axle. Then remove the steering knuckle. Using a wire brush, clean up around the mounting point on the lower ball joint. This will remove any debris so you can easily see that snap ring and nothing will bind during the removal process. Using snap ring pliers and a standard screwdriver, remove a snap ring. If equipped with a grease fitting, use a small wrench to remove it. Now is pressing out that old ball joint. Using the appropriate size attachments, the ball joint needs to push down and it should move freely within an adapter. It's always important to ensure those threads in the press are well lubricated. Tighten the ball joint press and slowly push out that ball joint. Once removed, remove the ball joint press. Clean up the area around the ball joint using a wire brush. This will remove any debris and ensure the proper installation of the newer ball joint. Compare the old and new ball joints to ensure they are the same. 
The new ball joint will need to be installed without the grease boot. Make sure the adapter for the ball joint press and the control arm are clean and free of any debris which could potentially fall into the new grease. Use the appropriate adapters to push in the new ball joint. You can start it in place first with something flat on the top side. Then you'll need to switch adapters which has free movement to push it above the control arm surface for the snap ring. The bottom flange of the ball joint should be firmly pushed against the bottom of the control arm. Do not use any lubricant for the installation. Once in place, then remove the press. The next step is installing the grease boot. This particular brand of ball joint does come with an installation cap. Simply push the boot into place and then using a hammer with a cup, tap it on. These are a serviceable ball joint, so they have a grease fitting. Install the grease fitting using a small wrench and angle it in such a way where it's easily serviceable and not interfering with any components. Install the new snap ring using snap ring pliers and a standard screwdriver. Ensure that snap ring is in place. I like to use a standard screwdriver to give it a spin around as well and push in various areas, making sure it's properly seated in the groove. While I had everything apart, now was a good time to check the wheel bearings too. I did notice some clicking in the wheel bearing on both sides, so new wheel bearings were installed. I will have a video specifically for this in the future, so keep an eye out for that. Next was reinstalling the steering knuckle. First the axle was pushed back into the wheel bearing and then the lower ball joint was connected. The castle nut was installed by hand so everything is held into place. The lower control arm was jacked up slightly to push some weight up so it's easier to connect the upper control arm. The axle nuts are technically required to be replaced, however I did reuse mine and applied some thread locker. The nut was then ran in with an impact. It'll be properly torqued after. Due to the tension of the bushings, you'll need a pry bar to pull the upper control arm down into the steering knuckle. I used the coil spring as a leverage point, then installed the castle nut by hand. Finally, the tie rod was put back into place. Now for the torque specifications for each of those nuts. The upper control arm specification is 40 foot pounds or 54 newton meters. The tie rod nut specification is 45 foot pounds or 61 newton meters. And finally, the lower ball joint torque specification is 38 foot pounds or 52 newton meters. For both the ball joints and the tie rods, you'll most likely have castle nuts. I am using the upper control arm as an example as it's easier to see. Ensure the slots of the castle nut are aligned with the hole in the threaded stud. Only align the hole by tightening. Do not loosen the nut. Once that hole is aligned, install the supply to cotter pin. Push it in fully and either using your fingers or pliers, fold over the tips. Next was reinstalling the rotor. The back side of the rotor which mounts against the hub face was cleaned using a wire brush to ensure there is no chance of any run out. The hub and wheel bearing assembly is new so they don't need to be cleaned. If you are reusing your old ones, then clean them up using a wire brush as well. Install the caliper with carrier assembly and pads. Torque specifications for the caliper carrier bolts is 130 foot pounds or 176 newton meters. Before the wheel goes back on, the serviceable ball joints will have about 3 pumps of grease. The wheel can then be installed back onto the vehicle. The torque specifications for the lug nuts is 135 foot pounds or 183 newton meters. The wheel is then lowered back onto the ground and as a last step, that half shaft nut is torqued to 185 foot pounds or 250 newton meters. Then that center cap is snapped back into place. Moving on to the opposite side for additional angles. Safely elevate the wheel and use a jack stand. Remove the wheel and then the center cap. Reinstall the wheel and tighten down the lug nuts. Then lower the wheel back onto the ground. Using a 35mm socket with a Johnson bar, loosen the axle nut. Jack the vehicle back up and then remove the wheel. Make sure that reservoir cap is still loose. The wheel can be angled out slightly so it's easier to access those carrier bolts. Using large interlocking pliers, compress the caliper pistons. Using a 21mm socket, remove the two caliper carrier bolts. Pull off the caliper and carrier assembly, then tie it off using a bungee cord. 
The rotor on this side was rusted to the hub, using a ball peen hammer hit between the wheel studs. This will help break the rotor free. Do not hit anywhere else on the rotor as this can cause damage to the rotor potentially requiring a replacement. Remove the cotter pin on the tie rod. Then remove the castle nut. The castle nut can be installed back onto the threaded stud and ensure the face is flush with that threaded stud. Using a hammer, hit the tie rod upward. With this being flush, this will help prevent any potential damage to the threads. This method allows me to keep the tie rod as it was recently replaced. I remove the fender liner in order to gain access to the ABS sensor wire. The wheel liner is held in with a couple 8mm bolts. Once the fasteners have been removed, then push in the fender liner towards the frame and you'll be able to unclip it from around the fender. After that is pulling the fender liner straight out. As for disconnecting the electrical connector for the ABS sensor, there will be a red clip which needs to be pulled out. A standard screwdriver is best for this. Once you have pulled that red clip out, some wiggling may be needed to assist in the separation of the connector. A standard screwdriver can be used to pry up the clip to disconnect it from the opposite side. Remove a nut for the upper ball joint. In this case, it was a Stover nut instead of a Castle nut, so no cotter pin is required to be removed. A hammer can be used to hit the stud upward for disconnecting that taper on the ball joint. This ball joint will also be replaced, so I'm not too worried about any damage. Again, watch for tension on that upper control arm when it disconnects. As an example of an excessively worn ball joint. Once that boot has been removed, you can see there is quite a bit of play in the ball joint. It's extremely sloppy when it moves around, and hopefully you're able to hear the clunking. Again, the lower ball joint on this side doesn't have a castle nut either. The threaded stud was spinning, so a ratchet and socket were required while using a wrench to remove a nut. Finish up removing the half shaft 35mm nut. And finally is removing the steering knuckle. Pull the axle shaft out, make sure that joint doesn't pull apart. Now it's a good time to check over the CV joints. I felt this one was a bit dry, so I did replace the grease. That'll be saved for a future video. Using a wire brush, clean up any debris around the ball joint. Use snap ring pliers to remove the old snap ring. A wire brush can be used again as that snap ring can hide some rust underneath it. Use a wrench to remove the grease fitting if equipped. Then using the appropriate attachments with the ball joint press, press out the old ball joint. Always make sure those threads are well lubricated when using the press. The ball joint should have free space at the bottom so it can push through the control arm. Use a wire brush to clean up around the mounting hole. Compare the old and new ball joints to ensure they are the same and then install the new ball joint. The ball joint press can't be opened up wide enough so the new ball joint will need to be pushed in in two stages. First is pushing it in flush with the top of the control arm. Then adjust the attachments and fully push it through. The lip on the bottom side should be tightly pressed against the bottom of the control arm. Install the new boot using the installation tool. If you don't have an installation tool, use a large socket or a piece of tube can be also used. Thread in and tighten the new grease fitting. Aim it in such a way where it's easily accessible. Install the new snap ring using the snap ring pliers and a standard screwdriver. Make sure it's fully seated. Use a standard screwdriver to rotate it to ensure it's in place. Reinstall the steering knuckle. Install the axle spline first. Pull the spindle up onto the lower ball joint and thread on the nut. Thread on the half shaft axle nut then. The lower control arm can be jacked up slightly to help push it into place for the upper control arm. Using a pry bar, pull down on the upper control arm and insert the taper for the ball joint. Thread on the castle nut. Torque specifications for the upper ball joint is 40 foot pounds or 54 newton meters. The torque specifications for the tie rod is 45 foot pounds or 61 newton meters. And the lower ball joint torque specification is 38 foot pounds or 52 newton meters. Install the cotter pins for the upper ball joint 
Laura Baldron, and Ty Rod. Snug up the axle nut. This will be torqued after. Clean the area around the rotor for any rust or debris so we don't have any run out. Then install the rotor onto the hub face. Install the brake caliper carrier. Thread on the 21mm bolts. The torque specifications for the caliper carrier bolts is 130 foot-pounds or 176 newton meters. All the serviceable joints are greased. About 3 pumps of grease is needed here. Reconnect the sensor. The fender liner can then be reinstalled. Push it in as far as you can onto the top of the frame and then tuck it in behind that fender. The wheel can then be reinstalled. The torque specifications for the lug nuts is 135 foot-pounds or 183 newton meters. The wheel is then lowered onto the ground and that half shaft nut is torqued to 185 foot-pounds or 250 newton meters. The center cap for the wheel is then snapped back into place, and you're officially done. New videos are released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It's a huge help to me, and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to also hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.